I can. All right. Mm -hmm. So we've been talking about anxiety mm -hmm. and the uh, lack of ability to see it until it gets big. This is basically what we mean by what is the threshold between consciousness and subconsciousness? Mm -hmm. And can that threshold be manipulated as to become a skill so that the things that used to be subconscious are now more conscious? Yeah. Now, uh, some people will say, oh, the amount of sub stuff that's subconscious is enormous compared to the conscious. And the answer to that would be that uh, there would be a whole lot less subconscious stuff if, in fact, it became conscious. In other words, we can grind on and on and on and on subconsciously, but if we become conscious of it, we can bring it to a stop. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of what we have to do within the teachings of the Buddha is to start becoming aware of the things that we weren't aware of before, or in the language of Freud, we become conscious of the things that we were not conscious of before. Yeah. And because anxiety is one of them, because you can anxiety and unconsciously and anxiety and anxiety and anxiety, and it goes on and on. But if you bring it to your awareness and see the anxiety, now you can do something about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like my struggle, like up to recently, was really that uh, I noticed that my anxiety was getting worse in like more and more often. But uh, I think I was getting more and more aware of it. So, so right. So, that, so that's one of the big confusions that people have is that when they become aware of something that they weren't aware of before, it seems to be a whole lot more of it. Yes. Well, that's that, you want that, though. That's the whole point. It's not that the anxiety is increasing. You're mm -hmm. not creating new anxiety. You're just becoming aware of the anxiety that's already there. Mm -hmm. and, and, this, uh, and because of that, we should be happy that we can see the anxiety because otherwise we're going to be driven by the anxiety that we don't even see. We're pushed around without even knowing what the pusher is. Mm -hmm. Like, so a question related to this is more like, I see that in daily life now it's uh, more challenging because uh, I approach the anxiety with this uh, welcoming approach, let's say, and like welcoming it. But um, uh, for example, when I meet people or I have to do certain tasks, like if I constantly have anxiety the whole day, then at the end of the day, it's uh, I'm more exhausted. It's more likely that I won't do maybe a practice or uh, and then um, so it feels like I need to readjust a bit also like and uh, tune down the, the, the amount of uh, challenges amount or, or like situations that uh, used you to... created those challenges. You're the yeah. one who created mm -hmm. them. The people who were talking crap at you are not creating your challenges. They're just creating their own. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um... You're the one who is creating your own challenges. So, if you're alone, you can easier see that. The mm -hmm. example that I sometimes use is imagine that you're going into a gym to work out for the first time. Mm -hmm. Do you go immediately to the 500 pound dumbbells or barbells, the 400 mm -hmm. pound ones? No. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So, imagine all of those people that you're talking about mm -hmm. are sitting on your dumbbells yeah. when you're out there with them. <laughs> and what you need to do is to get them off your dumbbells so <laughs> you can practice with a light weight. Mm -hmm. Get away from the world. The, the Buddha was really big on seclusion. Yeah. You get away from other people. 
especially other people who were yammering at you, climbing mm -hmm. on your dumbbells. Yeah, no, indeed, that's a, a big also question that I'm like, so I'm wondering about now because um, so my job is going to be over soon and I'm really thinking like, OK, should I take more time to rela not relax, but like take it easy and uh, work on like managing little situations or less challenging situations instead of I, uh, I hope that you're talking about now that if you're going to have some time off, you should spend it in seclusion. That's the word that I used. Yeah, you're seclusion. not using that word. No, you indeed, need yeah. to start using that word with me so that I know what you're talking about. Yeah, OK, yeah. Mm -hmm. right. yes. Mm -hmm. Because when you're in seclusion, almost by definition, you're secluded from all the people and most activities. Mm -hmm. So, but now you're talking about it like so little moments every day or or uh, even more. Um, um, the more the better, short yeah. ones over and over again, long ones over and over again, intermediate size ones over and over again, depending <laughs> on the clock you use, but start spending more time alone. <laughs> And uh, yes, away from devices and stuff that may take away you out. Away from all uh, the stuff that hurts. Yeah, yeah. Seclude yourself from the fires of other people's mouth. Mm -hmm. Stay away yeah. from other people because almost unless you're in a sangha where you're around the nobles who say good things, but the world out there is full of Christians and Muslims and politicians and business people and workers and workaholics and they're all yeah. got unwholesome thoughts on their mind and so it's better to stay away from unwholesome people and congregate with wholesome people and right now you're the only wholesome people you've got yeah exactly so 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 that's really because especially also here in the west like i, I don't see exactly where uh, because also there are some places or monasteries, but like it's very easy then to find these uh, other approaches to meditation. How that many places there are. In fact, we've got 4,000 places on our website. Okay. On Open okay. Sangha Foundation. If you join Open Sangha Foundation, you can, in fact, start searching for things that are local. Okay. <laughs> Where are you, by the way? Are you now north of Italy or Germany, like both places? That is, uh, OK, yeah. well, both Italy and Germany, as well as France, has a whole bunch of places. OK, OK, now well, that's good. Then, yeah, I will definitely explore it. Yeah, because uh, yeah, we've got uh, a lot of stuff in Switzerland, a lot okay. of places in Germany. Mm. Now, I don't recommend them all because I don't know them all, but I would say that if it's a Buddhist place, especially if they've got monastics, mm -hmm. then, the, you know, because the uh, the monks and the nuns, the bhikkhus and the bhikkhunis uh, are kind of dedicated to getting away from the world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, because I heard this once, like, uh from another teacher that like he was a bit describing maybe the different style that maybe there is between uh, zen and more traditional buddhism uh, the, dis like. the distinctions mm -hmm. between the styles is totally unimportant okay okay and almost mm -hmm. always cultural uh, cultural the real ah, teacher of yes. the mm -hmm. buddha is the same everywhere. Mm -hmm. Teaching of the Buddha is stop hurting. Yeah. Now the world out there is not into stop hurting. No, that's the clear. They're one. into hurting. <laughs> hurting yeah. other people, hurting the uh, enemies, hurting all, uh, hurting their bank account, Hurt yourself. hurting their <laughs> job. <laughs> Yeah, mm -hmm. but there are many people, bhikkhus, bhikkhunis, 
uh, Tibetans, Zen masters, all are interested in stop hurting. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the technique that they use is according to the culture and according to the lineage that they have. Mm -hmm. But the goal is the same for everyone within the context of the Buddha. Is to see your dissatisfactions and come out of your dissatisfactions. Yeah. Now, I would make an exception to that. And the exception that I would make to that is called Western Buddhism. And a lot of the places that you want to cross are actually Western Buddhist. And the way that you can tell that, especially in the West, is they have no monastics. There are no monks, no nuns there. There's just some off-the-wall teacher who is still out in the hurting world trying to teach you how to stop hurting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, and, about, mm -hmm. and they, don't, they don't do a very good job of it. They, in fact, teach people to hurt more. To tough mm -hmm. up. Yeah, because I really took a while to, like, I was more in this Hindu tradition before, and uh, there was a lot of these pranayama practices that, but they were really meant to, like, develop some magical powers so that you could handle daily situations. It's like right. so raise your energy or, or like, uh, uh -huh. and right. I. So so they're hurting while they're wanting magic. They're hurting while they're practicing exactly. magic. And then they're really hurting because they don't get any magic. Yes, that's uh, that was my conclusion. <laughs> so, so. Mm -hmm. um, or if they do get some magic, they wind up hurting themselves with it and others. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, now that the only kind of like doubt I had was that uh, because I I saw that like for example in Zen sometimes they mention that uh, like through the old path at the end you 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 are able to come back to the world and uh, kind of leave leave it from a different perspective in a way and uh, so that's why Christianity has that too uh, Jesus said be in the world but not of the world mm-hmm OK, so basically what the thing is, then, is that you're in the world, you're born in the world, you've got all of this worldly stuff in your mind because that was what was given to you. You leave, you go into seclusion, you clean your mind mm -hmm. out and you stay devoted to keeping your mind clean. And to now you can go back into the world and stay clean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. However, that's a good idea, but it rarely happens in process. Basically, what will happen is, is that they, if they do get their mind clean, or maybe they practice for three hours and still don't get their mind clean, but if they do get their mind clean and come back into the world, it's going to get dirty again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you go back to the uh, into seclusion, clean your mind again, and then come back into the world, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's going to get dirty again. And so you go back into seclusion mm -hmm. and clean mm -hmm. your mind and come back into the world and get it dirty again. Mm -hmm. Until you begin to figure out, maybe I should not go back into the world long enough to get it dirty again. Maybe I should stay in seclusion. And then when you go back into the world, you're not back into the world anymore. You're in a what we call super mundane or above the world. So mm -hmm. that you do not get into the mud fight. Therefore, you don't get muddy anymore. That you're not really going back to the world. You go back into the world, but you remain secluded mentally. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And that's um, not a one time shot for most. They got to practice over and over and over again, getting their mind clean and then come getting it dirty again and then getting it clean and then getting it dirty again over and over and over again, 10, 15 times a day, day in, day out for years. Until they make the decision, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to stay clear or as the word you use was focused on 
not getting into the crap that other people want to give me. Yeah. Mm. But that takes a lot of practice and a lot of skill because your mind is already quite full of crap. And that needs to be removed first. Yeah. Uh, This is why seclusion is so valuable is because you want to be able to practice with dumbbells that aren't weighing very much. You don't want to have five or six people sitting on your dumbbell mm -hmm, while mm -hmm. you're while you're developing this muscles. You want only one. Polluted mind. And that's your (laughs) own. That's your dumbbell. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and like I think the, that the skill develop the strength of mind by continuing to practice over and over again to remove the unwholesome thoughts that occur and put wholesome thoughts in instead. Thoughts of safety and security, thoughts like there's no problem, there's nothing dangerous, got no enemies, everything is okay, everything is all right, not a worry in the world, everything's going to be all right. We Mm -hmm. need to keep practicing that, develop those kind of habits, skills, rather than, oh, I got to go to town. Oh, I got to haggle with that shopkeeper to get the price down. You know, that kind of stuff is worldly. So we're going to have thoughts of, I'll take about going to town later. Right now, I'm okay. Yeah, and and the thing is that I think now I'm really able to at least uh, rationally and like change my thoughts. But uh, I can even say, yes, uh, let's go to town and whatever is like. And... Uh, but still, the, the automatic reaction comes back. It's like so, so, so the subconscious or whatever it is is like uh, uh, so anxiety shows up. So it still seems to be too heavy to handle at the moment. And uh, mm, yeah. Well, this is just another invitation. Then is just to start staying away from other people. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. and. Uh, I think no, no. I, I really totally understand like what you're saying, and uh, like the critic that before I heard a lot was like, ah, but if everyone goes to seclusion, or uh, like yeah, but yeah, everybody's I, not going to go to seclusion. That statement, yeah. what if everybody goes to seclusion, is presuming that it's either all or nothing. What if nobody goes into seclusion? This would be a madhouse. Yes. <laughs> What if nobody went to already going. Like the, the, the A fact good that the example world is of going. that, in fact, would be Serpico. Do you know the story of Serpico? No, no. Okay. Al Pacino made a movie out of it, and it was fairly accurate. Okay, here's the story. Um, Serpico was a member of the New York City Police Department in the um, narcotic squad. Mm -hmm. And when he joined it, they tried to give him money and he wouldn't take it. He did not want to be polluted. They set him up in a drug bust and he got shot. He quit the police force, took his minor little pension and bought a small cabin in Colorado and lived on the side of the mountain in seclusion after that. Okay. Mm -hmm. If. Those people say, well, what if any no what if everybody goes into seclusion? Well, what if nobody goes into seclusion? What would have happened to Serpico if he had not gone into seclusion? Would he have killed half of the police and in, in that that set him up? I you don't know what he would have done. Yeah. But he chose the right thing to get away from it all. And ninety nine percent of the people are not wise enough to walk yeah off yeah no no i i see now that it, like the problem most of the problems in the world are like would be solved this everyone would go to seclusion for yeah if everybody <laughs> went to seclusion the world wouldn't have any problems <laughs> the farmer would be out there on his tractor secluding his way around the uh, uh the plow field doing his thing 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> then I will definitely check out this list <laughs> on the on the Shanghai mm-hmm. website. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. So um, this is not an issue for people about what ifers. I mean, I've heard all the what ifs. What if everybody became a monk and a nun? <laughs> well, nobody, I mean, not everybody is doing that. What if nobody came a monk or a nun? Because that's just as likely as everybody doing it. Mm-hmm. Not happening. People are going to say, hey, I'm out of here. Some of them are strong enough to do it. But most mm-hmm. people are not strong enough to do it. So the question, well, what if everybody became a monk or a nun? The answer to that is none of them are smart enough. They're not wise enough. They're stupid people. They're weak people. They would rather have hurt than seclusion. Yeah. I mean, they're their own worst enemy. If they've been into seclusion, they'd probably kill themselves. I mean, with the war inside. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So when you go into seclusion, you got to go into it in the kind of the right way in the sense of uh, intentionally getting rid of the do yeah. getting yes. getting out of your hurting. And possibly with someone around that support this, this process kind of so. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. yeah. it is possible to go into seclusion because you hate everybody and then continue to hate everybody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Makes a lot of sense. Yes. Um, okay. Thank you. And maybe um, just one last question, quick. Um, more related to um, like so thoughts. I see that I get lost in thoughts, like especially in the morning. It happens well, wake more. up to the don't get lost in your thoughts. Yes, exactly. That's uh, every Remember time. Remember to look at what you're yeah. thinking rather than going off, you know, letting them carry mm-hmm. you away. You get yes. lost in thought. And and I noticed that like like saying this wow out loud, it helps like because it it keeps me more in the present, like in the so so I think I should just do it like it makes uh, whatever works. It, and, uh, it yeah. takes practice. Yes. Mm-hmm. You have to practice not getting lost in thought. Yeah. That mm. in fact, th- this is where the breath comes in that can help mm-hmm. with that. You can use the breath as a friend to not get lost in thought. Why? If somebody says, oh, just watch your breath, but don't do anything, it's really easy for the mind to wander away and get lost in thought. But if you have the intention of taking a long breath and then breathing in and then taking a short breath or a long breath breathing out and you start practicing that Mm -hmm. then the mind even if it wanders away will come back to the breath yeah and then you'll take another deep breath and now you're back in in the moment so using the breath will help develop the skill of sati which is remembering to not wander away Mm mm-hmm Mm-hmm. Or if you have wandered away, to remember to look at the fact that your mind has wandered yes. away. Yeah. Yeah. Now, one of the things that people will do most likely is when the mind wanders away and they remember to look and they see that the mind is wandering away, what do they do? They start criticizing themselves yes, and yes. the mind wanders mm-hmm. away right again. So mm-hmm, they didn't mm-hmm. spend very much time in the one not mind not wandering away. So bringing it back to the breath and taking a deep breath then will keep the mind from wandering at least for a little while. Yeah. Yeah, and I really see that uh, even like kind of ah, saying this, I see you out loud, it really helps in a way because it's uh, mm-hmm. it, it was a nice approach and uh, and even especially if I notice anxiety or tension, then uh, like this, like, wow, I can now play with anxiety. This kind of brings a bit of laugh and uh, like relaxation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. there's nothing to anxiety. It's yeah. just a, a blood condition. That's all it is. Yeah, yeah. 
but people don't like it and they're generally subconscious to it which means that when the anxiety is there they don't have control not only has the mind wandered away and that's where the anxiety is now the anxiety itself will carry the mind away Mm -hmm. and you're really lost yeah like thinking of something that you can buy to get rid of the anxiety Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or maybe something that you can do me i'll go on a vacation i'll go hiking in the mountains Mm -hmm. and then we hike up the mountain to keep from having anxiety (laughs) and they Mm -hmm. still have the anxiety because they're not working with it directly. But if you can see the anxiety, now you can begin to play with it. Take a a nice, happy attitude towards the anxiety. So the problem itself is not the anxiety. The problem itself is not liking the anxiety. Even when we don't know it's there, we don't like it. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then we don't even know that we don't like it. We don't know what we don't like. And so we get confused and start making stuff up about what I could buy or where I could go so that I'd start liking things. That was my problem because I like up to recently, I was like, I I had the anxiety, but I did not see a reason for it. And I was like, constantly like, why am I anxious? Why, why? But it doesn't matter <laughs> yeah that's a why mm-hmm. question the buddha was yeah. not big on first yeah. causes mm-hmm. you know in psychology they often do psychological archaeology mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the christians and the uh, uh astrophysicists are all big on how the things get started big bang theories and all of that guess what i wasn't there i don't know i don't care I'm much more interested in what's happening right now. So if anxiety is happening right now, let's not worry about where it came from. Let's play with it as it is right now. Mm-hmm. Yes. I like much more this approach. Yes. <laughs> Let us say that you were driving around in your car and all of a sudden you recognize that you're lost. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, if you're lost, then why do you try to figure out how you got there? Yeah, you better think about like what maybe what, to what do. you need yes. to do is to find something that's familiar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that you're not lost anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's the whole point about let's let's not do archaeology. Let's not try to go for original causes. Let's instead figure out what we can do with it right now. Aha, I see you. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Never mind which door the anxiety came in from. Here he is. Here he is. Let's deal mm -hmm. with it. Deal with it happily. Yeah. I agree. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. All right. Then, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you a lot. This has been a fun little yeah. chat. I've enjoyed this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll see you later. Yes. Thank you a lot, Memorando. Mm-hmm. Bye. Bye bye.